Hello, and welcome back to Educator.com and this series on AP Computer Science. Today's lesson is about numeric wrapper classes and mathematical functions. In today's lesson, we'll first talk about numeric wrapper classes, what they are and how to use them. We'll briefly talk about automatic conversion of numeric types. Then we'll look at one of the standard classes provided in the Java Standard Library, which is the math class, and some very useful things that you can find in the math class. And then we'll look in greater detail about one of the things that the math class offers, which is the capability of working with random numbers. In previous lessons, we've talked about the fact that there are three primitive types in the AP subset. Int for integer data, double for floating point numbers, and boolean for values that simply are either true or false. These are easy to work with, but they are not objects. And only objects can be stored in a data structure like an array or a list. You cannot store ints or doubles or booleans or any of the other primitive types in an array or list or other type of data structure. So to get around this limitation, Java provides something called numeric wrapper classes, which are classes that work like primitive types, but they are objects. So they can be stored anywhere you can store an object. So for, the, for an int value, Java provides an integer wrapper class with a capital I. For double, they provide a double with a capital D. And for Boolean, they provide a Boolean wrapper class with a capital B. And this, these wrapper classes allow you to store numbers or Boolean values in a data structure, such as an array or list, that only accepts objects. Integer and double wrapper classes are in the AP subset. Boolean class is not in the AP subset, but I wanted you to know that it existed in case you need to use it for any other reason. In general, every primitive type, whether or not it's part of the AP subset, has a corresponding wrapper class that allows you to work with that type of data, but as an object. So how do we work with these numeric wrapper classes? The integer class provides a constructor that creates an integer object from a specified int value. So this is what we do. We use the class name integer. We provide a variable name, in this case i. And then we call the constructor via new, the constructor of the integer class. And we pass in an int value that we want to have an object created that has that corresponding integer value. So this would create an integer object with a numeric value of 1,000 and assign it back to the, to the variable i. The integer class provides an int value method that allows us to get an int out of an integer object. So if I call i.intValue after I have created i with a value of 1,000, and assign that value to an int called num, then num now has a value of 1,000. So that is how we get int values into and back out of an integer object of the integer wrapper class. The double wrapper class works very much the same way. Double also has a constructor. And in this case, it creates a double object from a specified double value. So I have a double that I'm going to call D. I call the new, I call the new keyword to call the constructor on double. And I pass in the initial value that I want it to have. And in this case, I pass it in as a double, 5.25. So this creates a new object of type double and assigns it to the variable D to get the value out of a double object, I call the method double value of the object of type double. That returns the value that was stored in variable D. And then I can assign that to a variable of the primitive type double called size. So size would now contain 5.25 if I did this 
after setting the value to 5.25 in the double object. All right, so there's, there's more that we can do with these wrapper classes than just set and get values. We can compare the values of two objects of one of the wrapper class types. The integer and double classes both implement the equals method to compare the values of two objects. We've seen the equals method on other objects such as strings. And in this case, if I create a new object integer a and set it to some value, and I create another integer object b and set it to some value, I can use the equals method of either one of these integer objects. And if I call a.equals and pass b, this will evaluate the numeric value that's stored inside the integer object A and compare it with the numeric value that's stored inside the integer object B. And if they're numerically equal, then this will evaluate to true. And my if statement will run the if part and say A is equal to B. If they're not numerically equal, then this will evaluate to false and I'll come down here to the else part and it would print A is not equal to B. These, uh, the same equals method is implemented on the double class as well. So if I create a double X and set it to some initial value and a double Y and set it to some initial value, double also implements the equals method. So I would do exactly the same thing here and call the equals method of one of the double objects and pass the other double object and this would evaluate the internal numeric value of x, compare it to the internal numer numeric value of y. If they're equals, this returns true, and I would print this statement. If they are not equal to one another, then this returns false, and the else part would execute.